This will be part two of reading the schematic and comparing it to the chassis. And this one will kind of go over a couple little points. What I want to do, uh, I want to look at this coil. And the primary reason is, is pretty much everything else in this radio is pretty easy relative to this coil to pinpoint as uh, even the band switch had uh, numbers for the pins and of course the tube sockets uh, you just find the numbers to the tubes and correlate them to the socket everything else is pretty straightforward uh, your uh, on and off switch and uh, tone control and volume control but the coil this one particular coil which is the oscillator coil uh, unlike a lot of schematics which will be wrote on there that they have a, you know, an artist drawing of the coil showing the, the pins on it and number them in this schematic which I made a copy of the uh, original SAMS uh, it's nowhere on here and if you actually look down here at the coil, these are the three different coils that's actually associated with that one coil. Uh, it originally did not have numbers. Now I went ahead and went ahead to save time. Uh, I marked this already out, but I'm going to show you how I did it, and uh, so you can kind of understand uh, the process in doing so. Now you will notice that I've got different numbers and what I did was I went ahead and drew out my own uh, artistic uh, as bad as it is but representation of the coil with the pins there are uh, six pins to it six connections and I just picked my own numbers and I picked my own way of doing it uh, I just went clockwise one two three four and came up here five and six and those relate to these four that's here which is kind of hard to see the bottom one and if this thing will focus but it's down if you can see my pointer it's right there that's the bottom one and the other two are located back here now I just started out with one particular one uh, so coming down here pin one which is on the very top happens to be this one now it has two things hooked to it it has this wire and there's a capacitor right here now I decided to follow the simplest route which is what you should always do and that's the wire there's nothing else with it the wire just connects from one point to another point so we go from here and it's going to follow right down into the bottom of the band switch and it actually relates to pin 8 now if you remember from the video before we figured out how these were numbered and it, it's down in here and I don't have better lighting I wish I did but trust me it goes down there to pin 8 so all I had to do is come on the schematic and look for pin 8 which is right here find a coil symbol which is right here so that's pin 1 now from that point I decided to go to pin 2 and follow my diagram well pin 2 is this one it has two micas capacitors up to it and those actually correlate to this one and this one so then I follow this wire back comes over to here and I mark pin 2 on there now to go to pin 3 which is going to be the very bottom one here which actually correlates to this wire and if I follow that wire out it goes to a capacitor right here well this capacitor right here actually correlates is this one right here 
Now one end goes to chassis ground to the chassis right here and the other end goes to B minus which is related to this ground here. Now that's separate from the chassis so that's actually just a bunch of wires which in this case is all black wires running everywhere. So basically what that means is that that pin right there is going to B minus or the radio ground itself. The only one that does is right here which goes to here and here. Now at that point I had to determine exactly which one of these two coils is. Now it could either be this coil or the top of this coil. And the way I actually did that is used a ohm meter to ohm it out. This is what is known as a tickler coil. And um, I'll probably do a video on oscillators and what the tickler coil does. But it is a very low resistance. It's a very few winding coil. So all I had to do is go from here to here with the ohm meter and look for the lowest resistance. And I found out that that happened to be pin 3. So it's actually this tickler coil. That gave me pin 3. And then the only thing I had to do is look for pin 4, which is right here. It follows this yellow wire, and if you follow it around, it comes up to the top. That's pin 6 on the band switch. And we come down here and look for it. It's hooked right here. It goes right to here. Right there. Comes up, comes down, and hooks here. There's pin 6, and there's where number 4 is. Now to locate the other two, which will be 5 and 6, 5 goes to pin 7, which is right here, and that follows underneath. It's right here, follows underneath here. If I can move the one wire, which is going to make me have to use my finger, but there is pin 7 right there on the band switch and that follows underneath the coil comes back up and hooks here. Come on focus. There we go. Right there. So that gave me pin 5. Now I had one left which is pin 6 and it goes down to the bottom of the band switch which correlates here to number 10 and that's where it hooks. That gave me every one of these connections. Every single connection that's on here. And this would be the hardest thing to do since there's really not a whole lot of information in the schematic about it. Now figure, if you can follow along on this and do this, and figure that you could probably do the same thing by just simply following some wires a few little components. If you're not sure about a component, you know, like these two capacitors, you can actually follow where they connect to and find them on here on the schematic. Because they're going to connect to a certain point. So the, this capacitor actually goes up to pin 4 in the oscillator tube right down here. So you find that one, which it goes right here. At this point here, and that correlates out to number four on that socket. And you found that capacitor. You know it had to come to a point, and it points here. There's another capacitor, and that one actually went up and finally went to pin number three on the switch. And you could run that down. And once you know these two ends, then you know, well, they came together and they hooked somewhere. Well, they hooked here. And you can follow it back and mark out on your coil. 
Now the rest of the radio is pretty straightforward. Um, something I wanted to show out on here is that the isolated ground as far as this DC ground here the B minus and how it kind of flows out and it's going to be a little difficult because the, uh, the wiring is hard to see and I went ahead and chopped out some components but it it actually starts right here the, this wire originally went to the negative of the capacitor the electrolytics and this is also uh, the on and off switch and when it's turned on one side of the line then is hooked to that and I don't know if you can see it but there's a black wire and all the black wires in here flow through the radio and make different connections different points and one thing that they're doing is they're definitely connecting up these little tabs here which um, are the spring-loaded connections that hold the Loctal tubes in place which will basically grounds this collar down and uh, kind of gives some shielding to the pins as it comes through the tube. These are all grounds uh, and you follow them through and they, they all the black wires wherever they go will always be B minus and anytime you see anything in the schematic such as this symbol that is hooked to some black wire someplace in the radio and you can start locating these parts because something like this is hooked to pin 3 on the 7B7 which is number tube, tube number 3 and it just comes across here and goes to ground so it's not too hard to really locate that capacitor now um, I think that's pretty much all I really wanted to point out on this. There is a couple of little things that's on this particular schematic that I kind of really want to point out. Uh, one is the band switch. Yeah, you can see part of it here and part of it here and of course down around the coils. Um, a lot of schematics you'll run into will have somewhere road on here band switch set in broadcast mode your broadcast uh, setting um, or AM radio uh, this schematic actually doesn't say that but what this schematic does have on the schematic page is two tables one is the voltage table and the other is the resistance table and here they tell you the voltage and resistant readings taken in broadcast position or AM position. Now that's kind of code about where that band switch is set in the schematic itself and the reason I say is they're kind of being a little tricky about it. Now the nice thing I do like is it does have both tables and there's a, a definite importance for both voltage and resistance but it's the resistance table that tells me that in this schematic on the schematic itself that band switch is in broadcast position because if you follow the schematic out and you look at some of these resistance readings on the different pins you will see some of them have to correlate and will actually be measured through the band switch if that band switch was in any other position other than broadcast in other words in shortwave in this case there's only two positions then some connections won't be made and it would not make any sense there'd be no way you could get that resistance that's in on certain pins so by them telling you this resistance chart is set with the band switch and broadcast position then on the schematic drawing itself it also is in broadcast so at that point you can do other things other than just following the voltage and the resistance charts but you can also trace out the circuitry and how everything comes together and works and what's happening and stuff so that was really some of the big pointers on here um, one other thing 
I already did a little marking on here just to kind of show you but when you're working on a radio and e even if it's the simplest one first and foremost always take pictures like I said before and take pictures as you go through uh, the other thing you want to do is mark out components that you already replaced if you replace a wire mark it if you, when you replace a capacitor after you replaced it mark it this will help you keep track of where you're at because you may not get this all done one day one night one week two three weeks you know so you can always come back and go hey I already replaced that capacitor so I don't have to worry about it anymore so it's, it's a good way of uh, keeping track of what's going on now some of the other things I want to show out is I showed you the Loctal and how they're numbered and the Octals there's a few other tubes there's the miniature 7 and 9 pin tubes and these mark out if I don't lose it um, maybe I can get it here. it's kind of hard to do one handed there's an opening right here between the pins and that opening correlates to where you're going to start pin one. Pin one will be right next to the left of it. And that's how you count them off clockwise. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. Now, other tubes, older tubes, are like these. There's no keys, no nothing. But what they do have is on the filaments, the pins are much wider, thicker and that's where you start numbering from pin one is always the left one two three four and so forth same way with the four pin socket tubes same way i'm gonna have to cut this at this point i might go ahead and make a part three just a short one but this is getting long plus my battery indicator is saying hey um, i'm running out of battery so until next time Thanks for watching.